Welcome back to Game Data. In part one of our Steam Deck emulation tutorial, we gave a general overview of how to get started using EmuDeck. In this video, we're diving into external monitors a bit more to show you how you can use a second monitor to play dual screen games from Wii U, DS, and 3DS consoles a bit more faithfully. None of the setups are very difficult, but grabbing a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard might be recommended to make your life just a little bit easier. Also, if you're only interested in one of the emulators, feel free to use the chapters to skip around. This tutorial's for you, so use it as you see fit. All right, let's get started. We've already discussed dual screen emulation a ton on this channel with our coverage of the Surface Duo line, as well as how form factor really matters to get emulation correct. You could easily play 3DS games packed onto the Steam Deck's tiny display, but you likely won't have a fun time doing it. The same kind of goes for Wii U games. Many Wii U games were built to be able to play it solely on the gamepad, but there are extra features and conveniences available on many other games if able to use the gamepad as a second screen. Fortunately, there are a couple workarounds to make everything look a lot better. Unfortunately, the ease with which you can enable the workarounds depends entirely on the emulator being used. For Wii U emulation, Simu is really the only emulator around. Luckily, it also has a dedicated option to separate the gamepad view into a second window. By dragging the gamepad window to the Steam Deck display, maximizing it, and right-clicking on the header, you can set the window to take up the full display by either going full screen or disabling borders. You can do the same thing with the main Simu window by toggling the full screen option and launching a game. And voila! Wii U emulation in its finest state across two screens. It's ridiculously easy to get running, and while you can do this with any dual monitor setup, it's a bit special here since the Steam Deck has an integrated controller and much of the look and feel of an actual Wii U gamepad. The downside is actually exiting emulation. While testing this setup, I found myself pretty frustrated whenever I needed to back out of the game because the right trackpad shifted to function as a right joystick instead of a mouse cursor. That's expected due to the controller layout, but has been a hassle nonetheless and a noted warning to y'all. If you're thinking of giving this setup a shot, I'd recommend having a dedicated keyboard handy, fiddling with the controller layout a bit, or getting really comfortable with Steam button shortcuts. On my end, I actually managed to get out by pressing Steam plus A, which managed to restore mouse cursor control and let me exit out of everything. But as long as you can deal with that headache, it's an otherwise smooth experience. You might start to hear the fans after a bit though, since the Steam Deck's doing quite a bit of heavy lifting. DS emulation is where it starts to get kinda awkward. Firstly, RetroArch doesn't support stretching across monitors, so the DS cores downloaded with EmuDeck didn't help me too much. DSUME also had trouble stretching across the screen properly, so that was a no-go. Uh, I ended up actually going with Melon DS for my emulation. You can grab it right from the Discover shop, and it's worked pretty well in my short testing. The setup's a bit finicky though. First, I had to set my external monitor to the same resolution as my Steam Deck. That's because we need to stretch the Melon DS window across both screens and different resolutions would mean some weird resizing. DS games are going to be fairly low resolution anyway, so the decreased resolution shouldn't matter a ton for actual gameplay. Second, I filled the Steam Deck screen with the Melon DS window then right-click the header to select the resize shortcut and expanded the window to fit both screens. Once in place, I removed borders and hid the taskbar to complete the look. The third step takes a little finesse. I started by launching a game, then with the game visible, 
I played around with the options for gap size to get the images just right. 64 pixels seemed to work pretty well for me. And with that, the visuals are now in place, but your controller might not work. So for the final step, head to the input settings and map your controls as you see fit. With this setup, everything works pretty well. Like I said though, it's worth noting that DS games are fairly low resolution. Even on a screen the size of a 3DS XL, games can look pretty pixelated. Larger external monitors might not be the best in this case. I did my testing mainly on a 27 inch 1440p display and that seemed almost too big for the output. It's really a matter of personal opinion though. Next up, Citra for 3DS emulation. Within Citra, there's no option to separate the bottom screen to a separate window and no native way to span the window across both screens without it looking awkward in most cases. Even if we attempted the Melon DS route with just the settings available in the app, we'd wind up missing content where the gap between screens is located, which isn't ideal. On every platform I try it on, whether it be Android, macOS, Windows, or Linux, Citra generally works pretty well for the games I play, but has the odd issue where screen layouts beyond a few generic presets can only be updated through the app's configuration file. Meaning, if we want proper dual screen spanning on our random monitors, we're going to have to do some editing. That's a real shame too, because the config file can be super intimidating to work with due to all the settings within it. Luckily, we won't have to do much to get this setup working. Now, for anyone who's never worked with Citrus config file before, it's a .ini file which contains all of the app's various settings to control the appearance and playback of games. To get two screens working at once, we'll want to manually update the screen layouts mentioned in the file to match the combined resolution of our Steam Deck and external monitor. To start, go to desktop mode and open up your Dolphin File Explorer. Click on your home directory, if not there already, then click on the hamburger menu at the top right and select Show Hidden Files, if not already selected. Then scroll down and select these folders in order. .var, app, org.citra, emu.citra, config, and citra emu. Within that final folder, you should see a config.ini file or something named similarly. Before doing anything, copy that file to make a backup. That way, if we mess anything up, we can always revert back to the original settings. Next, Open the config.ini file and scroll down to the section marked as layout. Take a moment to look at each of these settings and you'll notice that they're all specifying things related to screen size, layout type, and whether a default layout should be used. What we'll want to do is make sure all of those custom default values are set to false and that the bottom, top, left, and right numbers correspond to the size of our monitors. You can check your monitor sizes by going to system settings and clicking on display and monitor. And with those sizes in hand, you'll just want to take those values and plug them into the file as I'm showing on the screen right now, along with a handful of other settings. If that still seems overwhelming, don't fret. You can also check out the video description for a Google Drive link to pre-made config files for various common screen sizes where the Steam Deck is to the left of the external monitor. If using one of those files, just make sure to rename it to match the name of your original config file. And ultimately, once your updates are finished, make a copy of that updated file as well in case Citra manages to overwrite it in the future. With the config file in place, the hardest part's over. Now it's just a matter of launching the game and making it look nice. Start by opening Citra still in desktop mode, and choose a game to play. The game should launch in a separate window and not be very visible. That's perfectly fine and expected. All you need to do is drag it to the Steam Deck's display, maximize it, 
right click on the window header, select more options, select resize, and move your mouse to stretch the window across your external display. Once the window's in place, right click the window header again to remove the border and set your taskbar to auto hide. If your config file was set up correctly, both screens should properly span both monitors and look like a blown up 3DS. If anything seems off, all you'll need to do is fine tune the dimensions just a tiny bit in your config file. Unlike DS games, 3DS games don't look quite as pixelated on larger monitors, but you're still probably not gonna wanna put it on like a 65 inch TV or anything. Additionally, once everything's set up, make sure your controls work well. If you used Emodec to set up Citra, you should be fine. Otherwise, you may need to remap your controls or change your desktop controller layout via Steam. Okay, some final things to know, since it might be kind of awkward for new folks unfamiliar with Citra. Emulation with Citra varies drastically by game. Graphical glitches and slight slowdowns are to be expected for certain games. There's actually a compatibility list, which I'll link in the description for anyone to check out in case they're curious. You can adjust settings within Citra as well to help a bit with general performance, but many issues could come down to a need to wait for Citra's updates or for someone to release a patch specific to your game. Most games I've tried work pretty well with only some slight issues but the only 100% guaranteed way to play all 3DS games as intended is to modify a new 3DS. Everything else comes with its own set of caveats and restrictions. Still, I really enjoy the fact that we can emulate games like this on a handheld PC. <laughs> with the closing of the 3DS and Wii U eShop looming in the near future, having more ways to play benefits all gamers. If you have a Steam Deck already, I say it's well worth trying out for yourself, even if there are just a few tiny hiccups. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Are you excited about the flexibility of handhelds like the Steam Deck? Were there any other workarounds we didn't cover in this video that you'd like to share with others? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you found this video helpful or informative, go ahead and click that like button to let me know I did a good job. Plus, get subscribed for more videos on handheld tech in the future. If you're looking for more videos on 3DS emulation, check out our setup guide for Citroën Surface Duos. Oh, and the next videos coming are an actual emulation review of the Steam Deck and my review of the Fold 4 after using it for about a month uh, when, from when that video was posted anyway. Both are looking pretty fun, so definitely don't miss it. But that's all for this video. Until next time, catch you later.